I squeezed the tube and out came a wool sweater. Um, <laughs> and you know it took Hank Aaron 17 years to get 3,000 hits on the baseball field. I did it in one afternoon on the golf course. Uh, <laughs> my. <laughs> Oh, well, it's good to be here. Now, uh, this is Philip Batten. I told you that already. He sings our tenor. He's from Caldwell, Idaho. And I was telling him earlier this year um, about drive-in movie theaters. And he didn't know what that was. So I explained it to him, and he decided to try it out for himself. And uh, there's two drive-in movie theaters right there near Caldwell. So he was trying it out for himself. And, and uh, he was there for quite a while, and he'd have still been there. Had I not uh, called him up, he was waiting to see closed for the winter. <laughs> yeah, you might, you might pray for us. Man. Are you ready to hear us sing about Jesus? We got a song that just, just that. I'd like to say it again.
Too hard. 
now we're going to sing what's called a hymnal or a hymn out of the hymnal to God be the glory just a few moments and greet your neighbor and uh, give him that scripture greater is he that is in me than he that is in you something like that or
Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. We can't imagine what he has prepared for us. You know, we, we talk about heaven, and oh, yeah, that's, I, I think it's going to be pretty good. But we, we cannot describe it. It's beyond our description, and, and I can hardly wait for that day. Uh, I'm uh, just, and after today, with uh, the first four holes uh, on that golf course, I, I thought it was time to go already because I wasn't doing any good there. But, uh, now, some of you have been coming to me and say, when is Dr. Dilo going to sing uh, with the quartet? Yes. And uh, we did, we, we're going to have him sing with us tomorrow night. And uh, we'll be singing a hymn, uh, a Trust and Obey. So we'll, we'll work on that, maybe have a practice tonight and so forth. He actually doesn't need to rehearse it because he, he sang it with us at a camp up in Washington, the state of Washington. And uh, before it was over with, he started to sing my notes. And uh, so it's, it's hard for me to, uh, to do that. Although I have uh, quite a range. When I was a sophomore in high school, I sang tenor. And by the end of the year, I was singing the bass part. So the, the choir director, he moved me from the alto section to the tenor section, to the bass section, and, or to the baritone and then the bass. And uh, you know that was quite an adjustment. And I started out singing with a barbershop quartet. And so I was singing the bass by the end of the year. And, and uh, so when times like this happen, you, know, you have to fill in. And I've been singing some of the baritone parts and some of the lead and so forth. And, and for a while there, I thought about going on the road by myself. And, <laughs> but I didn't get along with the other members, uh, so that, that, that didn't work. But <laughs> Isn't God good? Yes. I am so enjoying uh, our fellowship together and the challenging messages that we're receiving. Yes. And um, there's a message within a song that we're going to sing for you now that uh, Philip's going to sing. But it was written by a previous uh, Liberty member, Dorn Ritchie, uh, who... But he's not here, but uh, his music isn't. I'll tell him you clap for him. He's a music minister at Yakima West Valley Church of the Nazarene. And uh, so just so you know what he, that he's still involved in music ministry, he played the piano and sang baritone. And he wrote this song uh, very, through a very difficult time. And you know, a lot of songs that have been written were written through very difficult times, and it has brought encouragement. And I know this song will bring encouragement to you, one that's been requested all over the country, I'm his. There's 
say, overcome by love that stays, so amazed at the change. If you could see the man I was, then you believe in a saving touch that could reach down to where I was, you'd be amazed at the change. So worth the walking, traveling down a dusty road. I'm so glad that the Lord is in charge of these services. Um, yes. We were planning to do that song for offering, and I don't think that's a very good offering song. <laughs> I'm used to the change. Sometimes for offering, we'll do dig a little deeper. <laughs> Have you enjoyed Dr. Deal's preaching? Hasn't it been fantastic? Actually, that song would have been good for your, the first message you did Sunday morning about change it or commit it uh, impacted me, and uh, I just enjoyed that message um, so much, and I can't wait to hear what you've got for us today. And uh, let's, let's welcome him back and thank him for preaching for us. Well, thank you very much, Royce, and uh, you've, uh, you've given them a response, but let's do it again. Don't you enjoy liberty here tonight? God bless you all. You did good. Oh, that's good. Well, I really do appreciate you guys putting in the order for uh, the weather to be Denver-like. <laughs> but you can stop right now if you like. And uh, it's okay with me if the sun comes out and it warms up. Uh, man, I thought I was coming to s southern Arizona. <laughs> I didn't know that we were in Flagstaff. But anyway, <clears throat> wow, I think uh, really I do believe that uh, you need to get your cameras out tomorrow morning because these mountains right here are white. And... Uh, you don't get that picture very often in Tucson, Arizona, 
And I, um, I well, I, I have my uh, little my little phone over here, which also has a camera within it. So I'll uh, be taking pictures and say, uh, this is Tucson in the winter. <laughs> is this winter? I guess it's winter. It's February anyway. <clears throat> and thank the Lord I did bring a longer trench type coat uh, just in case. I didn't think it'd snow, but I thought there's one chance out of 90 or 99 that it might rain. <laughs> but uh, didn't know I was going to have to get the parka out. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Hey, if it's all right with you, I've tried to kind of check the crowd out, other than the p pastor and the quartet. I, I don't see a whole lot of suit and ties here tonight. There are some, but I believe this or this coat needs a rest. So, uh, is that okay if I take this thing off? Is that, is that okay? Well... I just did. If you don't like it, God bless you all. Just, you got to, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Boy, you've got me down. I'm afraid way too good here tonight. But, uh, well, <clears throat> I'm not going to try to run back and forth across this platform a lot, but if this message can be communicated from my heart and the Scripture to you, I've got to walk from here to there. So uh, here we go. God wants to make a special kind of Christian out of you. All of you and me. We don't come off the end of the line like <clears throat> cookie cutter Christians. Just We all just walk alike and we all look alike and we all think alike and we all kind of just go like robots. That is not the way it is. We're all made differently. We're all put together with different gifts and graces and abilities and strengths and weaknesses. And God wants you, no matter who you are or what your age is, and he wants to make something special out of you, not necessarily like the person sitting near you, but you, and now this is a rather simplistic um, uh, deduction of all of this, and if you want to get more complicated, we can do that at another time, but it'll take all semester. <laughs> and we only have got, we've only got a couple of days here, so we've got to just get it down to the simple, the simple part of it. It all starts with a prayer, whether you use these words or not, this general prayer of forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I've sinned. I've done wrong. I, I, I've sinned against God. I've sinned against people. I've sinned against myself. Lord, I, I've, I've done wrong. I'm, I'm beginning to understand that sin will lead me to hell and and even though everybody jokes about it, I'm, I'm afraid that it is real. The Bible says, so Lord, forgive me of my sins. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to be lost forever. And I'm going to 1 Peter, and then we'll walk on through it. 1 Peter chapter 1, and I'll stay there except for the first verse of the next chapter. But 1 Peter chapter 1, now listen to these words. It's talking about forgiveness it's talking about getting started on this journey from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. Knowing that you were not redeemed, you see, talking about being redeemed, being bought back by, well, I better let the Scripture tell by what. You were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct, received by tradition of your fathers, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. That's how we're saved. That's how we're born again. That's how we become new life in Christ. As much as I love your church, I really do. I really love this Oro Valley church, and I'm bragging on you on emails and everything else these days, telling people about you all. <clears throat> but you can come here 
all the time, but it won't make you a Christian any more than if you live in my garage and you become a car. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You've got to open your heart and ask God's forgiveness and let the blood of Jesus wash your sins away. Amen. Now, it's great to come here because you understand and you hear that. It's taught and preached and all the rest. But we just, we've got to try to make it so that we understand. You were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now, look at verse 23. Having been born again. There's a good Bible term. Born again. Having been born again not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Well, now we're talking about being redeemed, being born again, being uh, our sins being washed away, uh, not by silver, gold, or whatever else, but by the blood of Jesus. And uh, our part, it's more... It, you can make it more complex, but trying to make it right down to where we, where we are. Lord, forgive me. It's repentance that I'm preaching about. Lord, I'm sorry. Please, come. Come live in my heart and life. Wash my sins away. I want to be a Christian. Amen? Now, I just need to say, in case we have a few theologians hanging around here, which we probably do, I understand there's something before this, and it's called prevenient grace, and I believe in that, and that's what God does to even get us where we can ask forgiveness and even realize we need to be forgiven. Uh, but <laughs> if you want to stay for the whole semester, then we'll go get prevenient grace covered. So uh, I just want you to know that I knew that. <clears throat> <laughs> mm. On we go. Lord, forgive me. Maybe I better find out. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. You, you believe we're on track. This is the Bible. I'm, I'm not preaching something else. This is the Bible. Being born again uh, and uh, precious blood of Christ, being redeemed. Uh, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Amen. I don't want to yell at you because that's not appropriate. But God doesn't save us so that we can sit. Amen. There is a journey to take. That's just the beginning. There's a journey to take. Uh, it's almost like, in a, in, a, in a manner of speaking, like getting married. And okay, now we're married. Don't mess with me. Don't talk to me. If I, if, I, if I want to tell you I love you, I'll tell you, you know, uh, every other Valentine's Day. I'll just send you a card. Well, brother, sister, <laughs> this isn't good English, but you ain't going to make it. No, no, no. We don't, we don't just get married and sit and say, don't. No, no. You need to take the hand of your husband, wife, and start on a journey Little did I know what the journey held because some of it is wonderful and blessed and uh, thank you, Jesus, and some of it brings you down to tears. And you say, oh, no, Lord, you didn't tell me this was part of the deal. Amen. Well, it's like that on the journey to heaven, too. It's not all hip, hip, hooray, glory, hallelujah, and listen to Liberty sing every day and get blessed. Some days are hard. Amen. But anyway, we better get going here. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we start to make progress spiritually. And we um, start to uh, read the, the Word of God. And somebody needs to direct you as to how to do that, where to read. I, would, I don't have time for all of that right now, but I would just make a suggestion. If you're a brand new Christian, I wouldn't start reading in Leviticus. <laughs> you'll, you'll get drowned. 
If I were you, I'd start in the New Testament, and I would start uh, Matthew or Mark or Luke or John and Pastor or a hundred others around here will give you guidance. Leviticus is in the Bible, but it's all the Old Testament, Jewish laws and so on. We don't need to get into all of that. But uh, <laughs> and if you really want to start at a great place, why don't you go to Lamentations? And that'll, that'll, that'll bless your heart. But anyway, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll talk to you later out there. Lord, forgive me. Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And now we're going you don't have to stay there forever. Amen. We've got a journey to take. Now, I am convinced whether you are hanging around a Nazarene church or some other church with another name, if you really are walking with the Lord and you really are into obeying God, you're going to hear something like this. Maybe not word for word, but the concept. Now you're a Christian. Now you're making progress. Now you're growing. You're going to hear something like this from the Lord. You have given me your sins. Now give me yourself. Mm. Amen. That's a different prayer, right? That's um, one thing. Lord, take my sins, wash them away uh, forevermore. Well, that's good, but that's not the end. Lord, uh, you've given me your sins. Now, give me yourself. That's consecration. That's surrender. I don't want to preach everything in the book in one night because, first of all, you can't do it. But you are, you are, you are around the church, and you're Christians. And if you're even brand new here, I'll bet you know that somewhere, many places in the Bible, it indicates that not only was Jesus nailed to the cross, but we also need to be crucified with Christ. That means that selfish thing within us, I want my way. I want to go to heaven. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. But I want to go the way I want to go. And I want to do what I want to do while I'm going. <laughs> and if they don't do what I like at the church, I'm going to have a fit. <laughs> now, folks, if you don't believe in this self-will and this selfishness, and that that is the seat of all of our problems, it seems, not only in the church, but in the world. If you don't believe that that's born in you, then get married and have kids. <laughs> is there an amen in this house? <laughs> you didn't have to teach them that. Amen. Well, Lord, uh, Lord, you've forgiven me, but I have... Um, Man, I, I still have these attitudes and all. If I don't get my way, I just kind of, I just kind of flare up, and sometimes I say things I shouldn't, and it's a little hard in the family, a little hard with the husband, with the wife, it's a little hard at work. And well, I tell pastors when I'm preaching to a bunch of preachers, so you know it works for all of us just as well as them. I say if you don't know for sure how to preach consecration, surrender. Lord, I've given you my sins. Now I want to give you myself. Well, if you don't know how, get one of those hymn books that Royce talked about and preach a hymn some Sunday. And it was written over 100 years ago by someone by the name of Francis Havergal. And just listen to these simple words. Take my life and let it be. Consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Now, now, I don't want you to just listen to me. Have you said yes, Lord, to that? Yes, you can take my life. Yes, you can take my days. Take my hands. Let them move. I won't read every word here. Take my voice and let it sing. Take my silver and my gold. Not a mite what I withhold. Take my will. Oh, man, that's, that's right. Lord, Take my will, my willpower. 
Take my love. Take my moments and my days. I mentioned that. Take my feet and let them be. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages for thee. Take my intellect and use. Take my heart. Take myself. Ooh. Like the Southerners would say, that's some more prayer. Amen. Now, folks, that is not complicated. Uh, take my life, take my hands, take my voice, take my silver, my gold, take my will, take my love, take my moments, my feet, my lips, my mind, my heart, myself. Lord, I don't have much to give you, but I've got Jim Deal. And whatever that, whatever I have, whatever I will be, whatever talents you've given me, whatever time I have on earth, Lord God, I'm yours. If the Lord's forgiven you and gotten you off of the road to hell and on the road to heaven and you're going to heaven forever, doesn't it make sense? You ought to give your whole total self to God. It just makes sense to me. Amen. So... Lord, t forgive me. Amen, amen. Lord, take me. Well, it's in the same scripture. Chapter 1, 1 Peter, verse 15 now. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. You can almost tell by listening that's different than being born again. That's different than being redeemed. Now he's talking about God wants us to have a holy heart. Th th there it is. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. That's the word of God. It dawned on me one day, <laughs> the Nazarenes didn't write the Bible. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We're just trying to read it and preach it and teach it. And may the dear Lord help us to live it. <laughs> Amen. This ought to preach in a this ought to preach in a Presbyterian church. Ought to preach in a Baptist church. Ought to preach in a Methodist church. Ought to preach in any church. It's the Bible. Amen. This is not we don't have a Nazarene Bible. <laughs> Some people think the NIV translation means Nazarene inspired version. But that's not true. It's New International Version. So anyway, <clears throat> he's called you to be holy. Be holy in all of your conduct. How about going down to verse 22? This verse, if we could just live like this in our churches, we'd have about 95% of the problem solved. Since you have purified your souls by obeying the truth through the Spirit, capital S, through the Holy Spirit, obey uh, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. There's the sanctified lifestyle. There's the Spirit-filled life. Well, so there's the consecrated life. Some people like to say there's the deeper life. I don't care what you call it. Just get in there and live it. Listen to that again. Since you have purified your souls, purified by obeying the truth through the Holy Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Oh, man, there's old-time religion right there. That's old-time religion. That, that will work. Oh, bless God. I'm... <laughs> I want to sing out of the hymn book. Well, I want to sing off the screen. Well, God bless you. God put the words in a book. Well, God also made the screen. <laughs> Churches fight over stuff like that. Well, they fight over less than that. Man, they'll fight. Some of them will fight over changing the service time. 30 minutes. Well, bless God, the cows won't give milk at that time of the day. I'm not making that up either. Huh? That's a real deal, but don't have time to tell you the story, but it's a real deal there. <laughs> Is there anybody here who believes I'm telling you the truth? <clears throat> Lord, forgive me. We make progress. 
Lord, take me. Amen. Surrender. Consecration. Giving everything to God. By the way, if you're afraid, if you just give everything of you to God, he's going to beat you up. <laughs> no, that's the devil. God doesn't beat you up. He wants to make something special out of you. Amen. And he can't do it if you're holding back something. Amen. So we need to pray a third prayer. You're not, you're not saved and you're not filled with the Holy Spirit to sit. We've got a journey to take. Lord, forgive me. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, take me. Thank you, Lord. We need to start praying a third prayer. Whether you use these words, at least you ought to have this attitude. Lord, make me into the Christ-like Christian you want me to be. Amen. Lord, forgive me. Lord, take me. Too many people sit down. They say, okay, it's all done. Bless God. Don't mess with me anymore. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. God's got a plan for you if you'll just get going. Lord, make me into the Christ-like Christian that you want me to be. You don't learn everything about this in and, and one dip in the river. <laughs> Amen. The Lord works on us as we go in addition to what I've already preached. Is that in the Bible? Two is after one. Chapter one, then comes chapter two. Chapter one is talking about being born again and then being made holy and, and purified hearts and loving each other fervently with a pure heart. Chapter two, listen to this. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And what I'd like to say about that is we need to be born again. You must be born again. Jesus said that. We must be surrendered, committed, filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we need to say, now, Lord, help me to get growing. Now that you may grow thereby. And let's just say uh, that's the door representing death over there. And we're clear back here somewhere. We've got all this way before we head out and head home to heaven. The Lord doesn't want us just to sit around and get fat. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff to do. And <laughs> mm, God wants to... Um, cut and polish you if I would be using a diamond illustration or he wants to refine you and me if I want to use another type illustration but I would like to use one that you know I'm pretty sensitive on my stories you've heard me say I'm not making this up I say that quite a little bit <laughs> because I'm pretty sensitive I don't like people think I make up these stories they're real However, I'm fixing to tell you one that I made up. <laughs> are, you, are you okay? I made this up. All right, get that on tape. I made it up. <laughs> you are wealthy. Well, at least for some of us, I'm making this up. You're wealthy. I mean, you are really wealthy. And you have found a 1,000-acre farm in the great state of Arizona that you're going to buy and you're going to fix up and you're, you, it's going to be the most beautiful and productive farm in all the state of Arizona and you're going to have all of the water to come in and the irrigation and so on and so on. And you, and you go look at it and it's an ungodly mess. The uh, whoever's owned it just let it go. And the fence rows are kind of beaten up and there's weeds here in the buildings. Some of them need help. Some of them need to be removed. And there's an ugly ditch that has, it, it, why, it's been turned into a dump. 
People, they, they put garbage down there, and there's tin cans down there, and there's bottles, there's a refrigerator upside down. And you're going to call the caterpillar guy, you know, with the big machinery, and he's coming out whenever you own the place, and he's going to cover that ditch over. You're not going to have a ditch like that, a junk thing like that on your farm. And then over here was, a, let's say, 100 acres out of the 1,000, and it must have been an orange grove. But somebody cut all the trees down. But they left all the stumps about that high. You can't grow anything there. You couldn't take a tractor in there and kill it. I'm from Iowa, and I know about plows, and I know about discs, and I know about planting, but you can't do that with a bunch of tree stumps. And so you're going to get rid of the tree stumps. The old big old caterpillar guy is going to come, and they're going to start getting rid of stumps and smooth that out. That's going to be beautiful and productive, too. And so you have closing and you're the buyer and the seller's there and you sign 35 papers, <laughs> maybe 40, and, and you didn't have to get a loan because you're rich, you're wealthy, and you didn't even have to get a cashier's check. They know you're, you're Warren Buffett's brother. <laughs> so all, you, all they want is just a check with your signature and you write out the check and rip the thing off and hand it over. They're smiling all over the place and they sign a few papers and it has to go through the court system. But anyway, the proper deeds and just like that, you bought the whole farm. Amen? It didn't take forever. You just bought it. And you get on your cell phone, walk outside, get on the cell phone to the old caterpillar buddy. Hey, man, it's done. Monday morning, I'll meet you out there at the farm site. We're going to get started. I really want to take care of that ditch first. But then we're going to take care of a few of those stumps. I just I can't stand the things. You all know I'm not preaching about an imaginary farm. And I'm not preaching about imaginary stumps. I'm preaching about me and you that after we say, forgive me, Lord, and take me, Lord, there are still some stumps in our life. I'm not talking about hidden sin. I'm not talking about the root of bitterness. No, 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 I believe that's cleansed when the Holy Spirit does His cleansing work, thank the Lord. I'm talking about stumps like, so I had to write a few down. Now, I'm not going to be picking on you. I'm picking on me so you all relax. <laughs> mm -hmm. Evidently, the Lord saw Jim Deal, that's me, and I was saved and sanctified, filled with the Spirit, and a pastor, and ordained, and amen, and boy, if we're going to win this town. Let, I'll get out and start going up and down the streets, knocking on the doors, inviting people to come, and um, 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 all that, which is all true. I think you've got me figured out. I have a personality. If we're going to do something for God, why don't we just do it? Why don't we just quit standing around looking at each other? <laughs> Let's do it. You know, I'm kind of made like that. Now, now, now forgive me if, you, if, if this is your hometown, but evidently the Lord must have looked at me and said, well, Deal's coming along, but he doesn't have an overload of patience. I'll put him in Atlanta first Nazarene and that'll cure that. Now, if you're from Atlanta, you just forgive me before I ever tell any more of the story, but God made me go to Atlanta First Church. I, I, they interviewed 13 pastors before they interviewed me, <laughs> and they all turned it down, and I call them the smart boys, <laughs> and I didn't want to go either. I turned it down too, and then the Lord made me uh, reconsider and go, but anyway, I got there, and I better not tell you all that was going on, but it was one more intertangled deal that, uh, mm -hmm. and there's some stuff I don't think I better tell you because not everybody's died yet, and there's a few people still alive. <laughs> but uh, uh, we had some people in that church that had a short fuse. Do you? Have any idea what that means? 
and it seemed like they'd wait to blow up till Sunday morning. And it just mess everything up. And boy, that'll bless a preacher. Man, you got a message on your heart and they blow up because you're walking down the aisle. <laughs> now get up there and preach, man, like you're happy. <laughs> mm. And anyway, I'm not telling you very much because I don't want to, but anyway, I'm trying to tell you it was a mess. And uh, Dorothy would say to me on the way home, Jim, how long are you going to put up with this? I said, one more week. One more week, and I'm, I'm, I'm somebody's. Some, the next week, there's something else. Jim, this is a, this is a, a weekly explosion. How long are you going to put up with this? I said, one more week. And I'd pray and pray and pray, and oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help us, Jesus. Lord, Lord, how long are you going to put up with this? One more week. I had to do that for a year. <laughs> I, I had to learn that not every situation is solved in a week. And I will tell you some other time what the, it, what the impossibilities were and how God worked it out to solve them without the threat of half of the church leaving and how God did it all and we didn't lose anybody. I can't even believe it to this day. But I had to learn patience. Patience. Amen? Well, I'd like to say that was a stump that God pulled out. I'm not saying that that was wrong, sinful, and full of the devil. I'm just saying if you get the stump of impatience out, then God can make you more productive and more powerful in the kingdom. Amen? Well, uh, you're, 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 you're a little cautious. You don't know where I'm going with this, but um, uh, here's another one. Uh, the stump of talking too much. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I've got a, quite a story there, and it's about me and, uh, and some people in the church un unloading on me in confidence, and I, and I only went to one other couple and said, we need to pray for that couple. They're about to kill each other. And, and I shouldn't have said that, but anyway, you pray for them. They only went to one other couple and said, Pastor said that couple church, but they're about to kill each other. And they only went to one other couple. They only went to one other couple. And by Sunday, the whole church knew. And that couple nailed me to the wall and said, I thought we thought we talked to you in confidence. Everybody in this church knows that when we were in there and what, what, blah, 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 blah. I said, oh, man, I'm sorry. I. I only told one person, but that was one too much, too many. Lord, forgive me. I, I need to learn some things you don't tell. Amen? Some things you don't tell. I went to the next church. We had a guy in that church, a very nice man and a wife that liked to be the pastor's buddy and liked to know everything. And he would say to me, what's going on around here? Oh, it's a, hey, what's going on? Everything's okay. Finally, one day he said, you're the most closed mouth preacher I've ever had. You won't tell me anything. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I'm supposed to get my hanky out on that deal, you know. I had learned that you don't tell everything to everybody. Amen. Well, another stump got pulled. Are you with me now? You know, that, see, the Lord's trying to help me to be a, a better pastor, be a better leader. Well, how about this one? Uh, <laughs> hanging on to hard feelings. Mmm. Mmm. I want to say something. I sure hope it comes out right. <laughs> I believe in everything I've preached, and it is more true than I can say. But you can't be saved enough and sanctified enough to never get hurt. Somebody's going to hurt you. People in this life are not real nice. And it hurts to get hurt. Amen? Amen. You're never going to get so religious that people can eat you up and spit you out and say things they shouldn't say, and lie about you, and you say, oh, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> it bothers me. So what do you do? 
I've had to learn how to put them on the altar and give them to God and say, Lord, if I don't let loose of this, it's just churning on the inside. If I don't, if I don't give them to God and turn this thing over to you, I'm going to get resentful and worse than that. <laughs> Amen. So the old time preachers used to say, put all this stuff on the altar. Put people on the altar that, you, that have hurt you. Put them on the altar. Well, I've put so many on the altar that it goes to the end of the county line. <laughs> and one day it dawned on me when I was thinking about this, well, somebody's probably put you on the altar too. Probably so. But if you have another uh, analogy, we'll use that. But don't hang on to hard feelings. You know what? That bitter spirit, that resentful spirit doesn't hurt the person at all that did it to you, but it'll kill you. It'll kill you. So another stump. Okay, I better hurry up here because not everything is taking away stumps. Something is adding to, and I don't have time to amplify this. You can get it. But I don't think when you're saved, and maybe even when you're sanctified, you understand all about tithing and generous giving. And um, the Lord had to teach me, <laughs> do you know what my last name is? It's Deal, D-I-E-H-L. German, that's German, Deal. Germans are known to be industrious but frugal. <laughs> mm. Mm. And when I first started out as a pastor, I made 50 bucks a week, so I put my tithe in for five bucks. That's a, that's a 10% 10, 10 of 50 bucks. And finally the Lord whispered to me one Saturday, I was making out the check, why don't you give God a tip? I said, because I didn't make 55 bucks. Well, give God a tip. I made that check out for $5.50. And I said, it about killed me. I said, I didn't make 55 bucks. The Lord is trying to teach me being generous. With 50 cents, I did that for about three months. The Lord whispered me on that Saturday. He's making another Why don't you round it off to six bucks, you cheapskate? <laughs> I think I added the word cheapskate there, but anyway. I've got a whole story on how God had to teach me to be generous, and now the joy of my life is to give to others. Well, and I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, you're with me, man. Let's see here. I, I might have a, I might have a quarter to get you started here. <laughs> man, this is what you call interactive preaching, isn't it? victory over impossible people. I didn't know that when I started. Brother, I needed it way back there. But, and then I'll just finish up with this one. I, uh, Dorothy and I took our, uh, the, the two grandchildren that lived near us at that time, Jason and Brooke, we took them to a toy store in Denver at um, South Glen Mall as Christmas time, toy store. She had Jason and Brooke back in the back of the toy store, and I got enamored by a toy by the front door. And it was a uh, kind of a vinyl toy about this high, and it must have had sand in the bottom, and it had a little face painted on it, and had a little something, you know, a little uh, suit or something there. And uh, you've seen these vinyl toys, and I, I, I saw this little kid come up, and he hit that thing, boo, and that thing, you know, and it hops right back up. And the next little kid came along, and he goes, boo, and that thing goes, meow, whoop, whoop, hops right back up. I saw a little kid kick it, boo, that thing goes, meow, whoop, hops right back up. I stood over there and said, behold, <laughs> the thing keeps coming back up. God has talked to you in the mountains, and God has talked to you out here by the California coast, and God's talked to you in the world. God talked to me in a toy store. <laughs> That's how I want you to be. When you get hurt, you stay down too long. Mm. Get back up. 
So the way I have it written down is how to recover rapidly from disappointment and discouragement. Doesn't that make sense? I stayed down too long. I mulled things over that were said to me that shouldn't have been said, but are people that disappoint you and we're all going to be disappointed. Or losses in life. Some people just give it up. They quit. Oh, bless God if that's, if, that's, if, that's, if that's all I get. <laughs> I just quit. No, 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 no. Get back up. God's got victory for you. God can get you healed up. I don't care what knocked you down. I don't care who knocked you down. God can heal you up and get you going again. Amen. And so I stood in a toy store and I said, Lord, help me to learn how to get back up quickly. And the Lord has been um, trying to teach me that. And I won't get into the story because I've said it, all that I need to say about that, but the greatest loss of my whole life has been when our young son died a few summers ago. And don't think I wasn't tempted to quit. <laughs> don't think I wasn't tempted to say, you know, God has answered everybody else's prayer, but he sure didn't answer my prayer for our own boy. And it did knock me down to tears. And I, well, I mean, it hurts. I mean, there's agony involved in that. Uh, there's heart agony. And I had to pray, Lord, get me back up. I'm not done yet. I don't, I, don't, I don't think you want me to sit in a chair now and rock in the chair and look out the window and watch the grass grow until I die. Lord, you got to help me. you got to heal me up however you can. And there's way too much to say, but I just want you to know that that wasn't a one-day event. That's been a process. But I'm, I'm trying to keep preaching the truth and and thank the Lord, the Lord helped me to start to laugh again. And then Lori, his wife, will send me a picture of Dave just laughing and having a big time. And I said, well, boy, he's happier than I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I took one of those pictures and have it framed, and it's on the wall of our kitchen of our boy Dave. Happy. <clears throat> What's my whole point? I don't want to stay down. And so the Lord had to teach me how to get back up again. Because man, lady, teenager, there's more for you to do. You're not to the door yet. Amen. And I'm sure I could make the list go on about a um, hundred, a hundred more uh, stumps or whatever these might be called. But I have felt led tonight to go this line of forgive me, Lord. Take me, Lord. Make me, Lord, into the Christ-like Christian that you want me to be. And I'm going to have Roy sing something in a moment. And you know these altars, I, I, I refer to them a lot, but these are not magical altars. It's just a convenient place to say yes to God. About anything. It came to me tonight as we were, you all were singing and I was looking at these altars. It came to me, Dr. Criswell pastor of First Baptist Church, Dallas, one of the greatest Baptist churches in America, came to a Nazarene, well, a big, big Nazarene church. And he saw the people coming and praying at altars. And it so impressed him. 
That doesn't mean they're all sinners. That means Christians were coming to pray about things. He went home and he said, we're going to put altars in First Baptist Church, Dallas. And he did. It's a great place for people like us to say, Lord, I think you've been trying to pull a stump or two. I didn't know what you were doing. I think you're trying to make me into something better, but I, I, I just want to come and pray about that and say yes to God. Doesn't that make sense? <laughs> Let's just stand. Will you do that? Everyone and, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, the word of God is so clear. You must be born again. We must be purified, made holy by the power of the Holy Spirit in, in, in being sanctified or filled with the Holy Spirit and selfishness nailed to the cross. But Lord, most of us tonight are at the point of, Lord, you're trying to, you're trying to pull another stump so that I'll be a more beautiful, productive, powerful Christian. Maybe it's impatience. Maybe it's I, I, I carry hurt feelings too long. Maybe it's I, when, I get, when I get wounded, I stay down too long. But, but Lord, maybe it's one of those things that I haven't had time to even think up yet. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we would just be so open that we'd say, sure, Lord, I'll just come and tell you to do what you want to do. Do with me what you want to do, Lord. I want to be all God's. Would you just come and pray about whatever the Lord has whispered to you about in these moments? If you will, that always gives courage to others to do it. And then God's going to answer our prayers. <laughs> will you do that? Roy, sing whatever you're going to sing. Oh, sure. Would you just come? Would you just come? Just right now. It, it's just, it's just the, the right thing. It's the natural thing to say, Lord, that's right, Lord. You're talking to me. You're talking to me, Lord. You're talking to me about these things, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And if anybody can't kneel, well, we've got front seats that you can sit on. <laughs> oh, God bless you. You come over here. Come on, there's others. If there's some room over here, and if there's not room here, just kneel, kneel at the end there. God bless you. Who else? The Lord's here. The Lord's here. God bless you. Sure, you can kneel at the front seat there. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Oh, man, <laughs> that's the truth. That's right, Lord. That's right, Lord. That's right, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Pastor, some of the best people in this church are here. That, that just uh, always tears me up. How beautiful it is just to see childlike obedience. Uh, Royce, uh, I'll have you sing another one in a moment, another verse, but I, 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 I think we need to gather in and pray with them. Will there be, a, I need about 25 of you tonight. Would you just come and uh, just be by them, be in front of them, be behind them, and just help them to say yes to God, whatever it is, whatever it is. Don't forget those that are on the front seats here. That's the Spirit. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's the Spirit. That's right. Oh, you're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. What a blessed, what a blessed, what a blessed moment. Oh, God, touch them, Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. If anybody else wants to come, you're sure welcome to come. It's just, it's just the right thing to do. God bless that precious lady. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, oh, God, touch them, Jesus. Touch them, Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
it shall be royal. Well, you know, uh, would you just want to be seated for a moment, just a couple of moments? And if you need to go, of course you may. But uh, Royce, are there any other verses? <laughs> Why don't you minister to us like that while we pray and you just kind of stay in the spirit there. And if you need to go, of course you may tomorrow night, you know, last night, be sure to be here. But, but this is really, really, God's really helping us here. So bless you, Royce. Go right ahead. 